If you are a Christian, how many times have you heard a skeptic say, If you believe that the Bible is really the Word of God, then why don't you, and then you fill in the blank with a divine command from Leviticus such, as why don't Christians stone people to death? The Bible is considered one of the most widely read books in the world, and for many Christians, it's considered an absolute authority in guiding their morality and beliefs. However, many Christians nowadays commit sin after sin on a daily basis without even realizing it. Since this topic is a little too sensitive though, we won't say much more, but we'll instead list chapters and lines from the books of the Bible that forbid some of the most normal and awesome things one could ever imagine, but nevertheless, you be the judge. Eating bacon, or pork in general. Leviticus 11.4 reads, Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof. As the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Translation, no bacon for you. Tearing your clothes. Leviticus 10.16 reads, And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. Billy Idol, Stephen Tyler, Tommy Lee, Ozzy Osbourne, Slash, and so many other rock stars and their fans shouldn't worry about all the sex and drugs, because their jeans and horrible t-shirts have done enough damage already. Eating Weird Little Animals Leviticus 11, 28-29 reads, These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel, and the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. We don't know about you guys, but some of us are part French. That means we've eaten enough snails to book a ticket straight to hell. Getting tattooed. Leviticus 19.28 reads, Ye shall not make any cuttings into your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. That little dolphin you tattooed on your butt cheek at age 17 during spring break while you were drunk off your ass has ultimately condemned you eternally. Gossiping. Leviticus 19.16 reads, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Go ahead and say what you want about your fat friend or bald-headed boss right to their face, picking out every now and then. Proverbs 23.2 reads, And put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. That's why I try to pick out every day. Playing American Football Leviticus 11, 7 through 8 reads, And the pig, because it's parts of the hoof and is cloven-footed, but does not chew the cud, is unclean to you. You shall not eat any of their flesh, and you shall not touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. Stick to soccer, baseball, or hockey. Wearing polyester or any other fabric blends. Leviticus 19, 19 reads, You are to keep my statutes. You shall not breed together two kinds of your cattle. You shall not sow your fields with two kinds of seed nor wear a garment upon you of two kinds of material mixed together. Cristiano Ronaldo is right when he demands his football jerseys be 100% cotton. Maybe he knows something we don't? One way or another, millions of soccer players around the world are in serious trouble. Hmm, pulling out? Genesis 38.9 reads, And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. I don't know how to explain this exactly, just use a condom, eating assorted seafood. Leviticus 10-11 through 11 reads, And all that have not fins and scales in the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. The absolute revenge of the red lobster. Working on Saturday. Exodus 31, 14 through 15 reads, Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Let's just count and see if there is a single human being on earth who won't go to hell over this. You lucky, lazy bastards. You never worked any day of the week anyway. Wives helping out their husbands in a fight. Deuteronomy 25, 11-12 reads, When men strive together one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets. Just sit back and enjoy. If your man wins, then more power to you for marrying Chuck Norris. If he loses, 
Just deal with the fact that you married a wimp. Round haircuts. Leviticus 19.27 reads, You shall not round off the side growth of your heads. So for the Beatles, Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber, and anyone who had a bowl cut in the 90s, whoops. Or trimming your beard. Leviticus 19.27 also reads, Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Don't touch your beard. Ever. Lumberjacks and hipsters rejoice. Eating cheeseburgers. Leviticus 3.17 reads, It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. The day I learned this, I decided I wanted to be a Buddhist. I mean, cheeseburgers are full of fat, right? The first five books of the Bible, aka the Pentateuch, Torah, or law contain hundreds of commands that deal with all aspects of human life, there is plenty of material for the skeptic to choose from. The purpose of this gotcha tactic is to take a verse from a law that offends 21st century ears and challenge the Christian's lack of consistency. After all, skeptics think, if Christians truly believed that the entire Bible was the Word of God, then we would follow every command given in the Bible, right? Isn't that just obvious? Since Christians don't obey every command, then they are inconsistent, and must not really believe that the Bible is the Word of God. The skeptic argues that we actually get our moral values from the surrounding culture, just like everyone else. But if we get our moral values from the surrounding culture, then why don't we jettison the Bible altogether? We obviously don't need it. What is wrong with this approach by the skeptics? The skeptic, who quotes from the law and asks Christians, why we are not following the commands found in the law has failed to read and or understand the New Testament. How do I know that? The New Testament clearly states in several places, that the law was fulfilled by Jesus and no longer applies to Christians. Here are a few passages proving the point. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. We who are Jews by birth, and not sinful Gentiles, know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law no one will be justified. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. These verses and others clearly state that Christians are not under any obligation to follow the divine commands given to the Israelites as they left Egyptian slavery and journeyed toward the Promised Land. The Old Testament was written for us, but not to us. It was written to ancient Israel. Now, does this mean that Christians should completely ignore the divine commands given to the Israelites? No, it doesn't. But the question as to how we should apply God's words to the Israelites to our lives today is an altogether different subject. The bottom line for this is that every time a skeptic throws a command from the law at me and accuses me of being inconsistent, of not obeying one of God's commands, I know that he has not read the New Testament and understood one of its major themes. Christians are not under the law, 